This is the Silent Dripper, a project I recently designed and manufactured. First, a demo. As you can see, both drippers are operating right now. To record the audio for this test, I'm using the Samson CO2 condenser microphone plugged into a Scarlett 2i2 with the gain turned all the way up. In my video editor, the track's audio gain is untouched. So I'll mute the commentary track and we can listen in as I do some quiet stuff in front of the drippers for a sound reference. Pretty quiet, right? It's funny to think that something can make less noise than a paper towel. This next demo shows one of the drippers in action. My finger is resting on a pulse sensor. Each time a heartbeat is detected, a droplet of water is produced by the dripper. The oscilloscope in the background shows the voltage coming directly off of the heartbeat sensor kind of like a DIY electrocardiogram. The waveform is bouncing off of the five volt rail. Um, there isn't a limit in my circuit that's causing the plateau. The dripper was created for use in a piece of performance art by interdisciplinary artist Sarah Dietrich. In the piece titled The Tenor Interval, two performers sit at a table across from each other. Above them is an IV stand with two containers full of water. Embedded in the table are two heartbeat sensors, one for each performer. They place their hands on the table with their index fingers covering the sensors. Each time their heart beats, their container emits a single drop of water, which falls from above them into the glass placed next to them on the table. Once their glass fills, they drink the water. Since the piece was first performed live on Twitch, the audience could participate using chat commands. The drippers shown here are the first iteration. These were fine for an online performance in a highly controlled environment, but were much too loud for a gallery setting and not as mechanically robust as I wanted. You can kind of hear them squeaking in the clip. I was very happy to be able to design a second version, which is what I'm here talking about today. The heartbeat detection algorithm works by counting rising edges on the ADC pin attached to the heartbeat sensor. Once a beat is detected, pulses are clocked out to the Trinamic TMC2208 silent stepper motor drivers, which are themselves connected to peristaltic pumps fitted with stepper motors inside of the drippers. The scope here is showing heartbeats followed by flurries of pulses out to the 2208s. There is a small hardware UI on the PCB to understand how the drippers are operating, including indicator LEDs for the two drivers. On startup, if a driver is disconnected or not responding, its corresponding LED will turn red. If everything is configured correctly, the LED will be green. You can see this here. The top driver's LED turns red because it's missing. The LEDs will then turn purple while their corresponding motor is spinning and be off otherwise. Two vertical potentiometers allow the user to dynamically tweak the drop size during runtime. I found that a lot of factors, temperature in the room, length of the tubing, etc., could affect drop formation. We didn't have these potentiometers in version one, and I was very glad to integrate this in version two to avoid small changes to the firmware depending on the weather. You can see me tweaking the drop size in this clip. I went from big drops to small drops down to actual one drop per pulse. Because the potentiometers are mapped in software, if you wanted to extend this project to do something different, for example, create multiple drops per pulse and have this potentiometer control the number of drops, um, that would be pretty easy because it's just a software fix. 
Mechanically, there are two main parts. There's the shell, which has the nozzle built in and encloses the innards of the build. And there's the internal piece, which routes the plumbing, holds the motor in place, and exposes a JST connector to the outside. Assembly of the internal piece is simplified by having it be a standalone part. You can get at all the weird angles you need to cram everything in before it gets slid into the shell and hidden away. The internal piece has a couple of noteworthy features. Rubber standoffs are used to mechanically isolate the pump from the housing. So these aren't perfect. If you stick your head right up against the dripper, you can still hear a low frequency hum uh, while the pump's operating, but they're good enough. Zip ties hold the plumbing and cables in place. And there's a small internal PCB that exposes the context of the stepper motor. Um, this ended up being a very space efficient way to connectorize this part. Okay, so the rest of this video is just going to be a build time lapse or an assembly time lapse of one of the units. Um, all right, so here I'm trimming the leads of the pump and I'm going to solder them in place to the internal connector. Yeah, you can see that there isn't any strain relief directly on the PCB um, that's getting provided by um, the zip ties internal to the part. You can hear my <laughs> my 3D printer running in the background. All right, so next I'm adding the threaded inserts to the internal piece. Um, this is my not good, <laughs> this is my worst solder tip. Um, so I don't really feel bad about using it to put threaded inserts in. So with that bolt there, I'm just checking to make sure that the insert went in straight. Um, so that's how the internal piece stays in place. There's a small bolt on the bottom that holds the two pieces together. Um, so these are the threaded inserts for the retaining clip um, that pinches the hose in place. All right, so now we're doing the PCB mount. Um, this is actually a tricky part to print. Um, those are really thin legs um, and I wanted to avoid having them be able to snap. So it took a bit to get the um, print settings dialed in there. All right, so with the threaded inserts in place, um, now I'm gonna start screwing everything together. There's a, um, the threaded inserts, or the um, rubber standoffs rather, are M4, but the holes on the pump are M3. So there's a, that metal piece is a thread adapter from M4 to M3. And then there's another plus, couple of plastic washers printed to uh, make sure everything's spaced correctly. Didn't want the uh, bottom of the pump to collide with the part. Uh, that would transfer more vibration into the dripper. And so here I'm kind of off camera getting the tubing in place. Um, the tolerance is pretty wide or pretty large between the outer diameter of the tubing and the wall of the printed piece, um, but it's still a little bit complicated to snake everything through. Um, I didn't have to use any lubricants. Um, wanted to avoid that, so made everything tolerant accordingly. All right, so now the tubing's going in place. All right, 
So now I'm going to add the retaining clip. Um, so this is held in with M2 bolts. Um, this is kind of where the main stress relief is for the tubing. So you could yank on that and it's not going to mess up the plumbing inside the internal piece. Um, but it doesn't kink it. It just kind of pinches it in place without closing the connection. So here I'm adding the zip ties. Um, these are to prevent the tubing from rattling around inside the part. So when the pump pulls on the water, it kind of wants to pull the whole piece of tubing as well, um, which can create like a sticking noise as the tubing becomes stuck and unstuck from the printed piece. Um, so the zip ties are kind of used liberally to avoid the tubing from shifting. You know, and to keep everything locked down. And so cutting the zip ties as I work. All right, so now we're gonna wire up the, or put the connector in place. There's four M2 bolts um, that keep the connector mounted on. And those are seated into threaded inserts. Um, so I leave a little bit of excess cable, you know, um, could cut it to length here, but you know, I know, you know, these are expensive pumps. I would imagine they're going to get recycled <laughs> at some point by somebody, whether it's me or Sarah or somebody else. Um, so leaving a little bit of extra length on there, you know, easy for me to design around that extra length. And then, you know, for somebody later, that's going to recycle these, maybe give them a little bit more to work with. So zip ties going in, a little bit of manhandling to get them installed. Um, but you know, once they fit, they're easy to lock in. So just making sure those are super tight before cutting the edges. Yeah, so now that tension gets eaten up by the zip ties and wire is good for somebody else to use later. All right, so now I'm installing the final four threaded inserts for the lid. These are M2s um, and the bolts are recessed into the lid so you can't see them, which is nice. Oh, drop that one. <laughs> I like to have all the um, parts for the assembly and just, just in bins, typically in front of me. Um, so it's easy to get at everything. All right, so there I am lowering the internal piece in. I'm now, I think, probably looking for the matching bolt. Where is it? <laughs> Alright, so there we go. Now the internal piece is locked in. So we're going to install the lid. Um, there's some more strain relief on the inside of the lid. Um, so you have to kind of snake it through. Alright, so lid's on, screwing it in place. And that's it an assembled dripper. I think this clip is representative of around an hour of assembly time sped up. All right, so this last part is maybe the one of the most critical steps in the process. So this is me adding lubricant to like adding a grease to the inside of the pump. 
So you can see there that the pump's mechanism is plastic. Um, so this causes rattling um, because it's not really held in place. It's just snapped in place. So what the grease does is kind of holds everything in place and then eats up all of the mechanical slop in the system. Um, so I squirt some grease in and then rotate the motor a little bit to create more pockets. Um, yeah, this was one of the key, key findings is you can add, because it's a peristaltic pump, right? Um, the mechanism that moves the liquid doesn't actually touch the liquid at all on like a, like a diaphragm or a centrifugal pump. Um, it's just the tubing, so you can do whatever you want um, on the outside. So running the pump to mix the lubricant around, or mix the grease around rather, and then I'm gonna put some more on. Um, there's gonna be a blog post in the description of this video where I kind of detail the whole research and development process for this project and you know finding this this grease trick was a um was definitely a game changer right um the pump was even with a trinamic driver the pump was a bit loud um while it was operating because of the like the mechanical you know clicking and squeaking of the plastic rotors but this grease um you know totally silenced it which was critical for making this project work um so this is just how I do it here. Um, probably a better way to do this um, to maybe add a measured amount, but this worked for me. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.